Don't mind me, everyone. I'm, I'm fine. I'm getting in here through my own choice. Oh, I did a squeak then. Don't usually squeak. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Lucy on Cars. Today's review video is this beautiful car behind me, the BMW 435i M Sport Convertible. It's an amazing car, it's got so much to offer. It's also known as a poor man's M4, but it's got much cheaper road tax and it might be a bit more practical for daily driving. Um, I really, really enjoy driving this car. It's actually my dad's car and it's bringing back all the memories of working at BMW a few years ago because this is the kind of age BMW that I was selling. So I feel like I know them very well. But welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new for lots more videos to come. So this car is kind of creeping into the slightly older car. Like, I'm, again, I'm not saying this is an old car, but it, it's that kind of era where these cars, you'd pick them up for like 50, 60 grand brand new only a few years ago. And now you can pick them up for a fraction of the price, but it's still an absolutely beautiful car. So maybe when you're watching this video, you might be thinking of buying one. You might be thinking of picking one up for yourself. So hopefully this video can help you today making that decision somewhat easier. Maybe it'll make it harder. I have had that effect. Hey. I don't know what to do when people do that. Massive fan of the channel. Yeah, he went, Lucy on cars. Is it really you? <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I have made decisions hard for people in the past, so that might happen in this video today. If that happens, I apologize. Um, but anyway, without further ado, the sun is shining, so we're gonna get behind the wheel. Another cliche car channel phrases. Get behind the wheel and um, take this beauty for a spin. <laughs> It's like I'm a parody car channel. I don't think this is real. I think this is like a parody account. So this is the first generation 4 series and when it came out, it was a little bit confusing because it was like, why is there a 3 series of a 4 series badge on it? What's that about? It was basically the new 3 series coupe slash convertible. So they said, we're not going to do a 3 series anymore that's not an estate or a like a regular saloon. If you want a coupe or a convertible, we're rebranding it as the 4 series, which is what this car is. And actually, when I worked there, you notice that the customers looking at a 4 series are very different to a 3 series. They have got two very different needs. They are two very different cars. And it kind of does make sense that BMW made the decision to kind of split it out. And obviously having two doors isn't too helpful if you're a big family, for example. But equally, I think a coupe is a probably often a more attractive looking car than a saloon. So you can see like the differences um, in the models and why it's been separated out. So behind the wheel now, the sun is just about creeping out. So we might have to get this roof down in a second. But just to roll off some facts for you guys, if anyone's thinking of getting one of these, probably gone on Google to find out these facts. But if you haven't already, let me remind you. We've got 0 to 60 or 5. 0.5 seconds, 306 brake horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, and a beautiful three liter turbocharged petrol engine in this thing. And it's a straight six, which sounds great. A huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video, but more on that later. So now, in terms of comparison for me, I daily drive a 3 Series, a 330e 2021 model. So it's the next generation up from this. This is the F33. So this is going back a generation for me, but it kind of ticks all the boxes of things that you'd want from the newer one, but it has that slightly older car feel again that I like. And I'm not saying this is an old car at all. I'm really not. I know that there's old cars in the world. This isn't one of them, but it has that kind of a tiny bit back in time feel where it's like there's actual knobs and dials and things that are more manual. It's less electric. We've got actual dials in front of us here. It feels a bit heavier and it's a bit more stuck down to the ground. I have to say our 3 Series sometimes feels a little bit floaty because it's just so light the steering now. This has quite heavy steering in a, in a really nice way. It's incredibly responsive, it's great round corners and it's really got some welly when you put your foot down. So let's pop it into sport mode now. I love in BMWs how everything goes red when you go into sport mode to dynamic driving. So we're just going into 50 mile an hour zone here. And it's just effortless. I'm barely touching the accelerator and I'm up to 50 like that. Um, you really would want to try this out on a track to give it like the full potential. But it's the sort of car you don't really need to think about. You just get in and drive and enjoy it. So we're coming into a little corner here. The steering is just, it's just spot on really. The handling is amazing. We'll push it a little bit around this roundabout if we can. See how it sticks to the road. I know BMWs are known for their handling, but yeah. This is no exception. Oh, sorry, George. <laughs> George's phone fell out of his pocket. That's how hard we go in the corner, but amazing. Look, it's just up to speed. It's almost up to speed a little bit too quickly. You have to be careful in these because it does not feel like you're doing 70 that quickly and then suddenly there you are. But this is this is a quite a steep corner and I just floored it round it and there was just no 
no roll, no issue at all. I was just completely upright in my chair, almost like I was going down a straight road. We're in sports mode now. I'm gonna try out the paddles, go down a couple of gears and see uh, what we can get out of this beautiful German piece of machinery. But I cannot do that on an empty stomach. So it's a good thing HelloFresh sponsored this video today, isn't it? I'm usually fueling up cars, but today I'll be fueling up my stomach. <laughs> so if you don't know already, HelloFresh is basically a meal subscription service. They deliver a big old box to your house full of fresh food along with recipe cards of your choosing. They provide all the ingredients basically to make these amazing recipes. So we've got a few different ones that I've chosen for this week. We've got a Thai green curry, rump steak with pesto sauce, rosemary garlic Easter lamb. So super excited for that one. It's amazing having such a variety of food to choose from. It makes meal times more exciting. There's less to think about when you're writing your shopping list because it's all just done for you. And it also means that you're eating fresh and real and whole foods. Today's choice for lunch is the ultimate Thai green style chicken curry. I love Thai food, so very excited for this. Here we have the final dish, looks delicious, cannot wait to tuck in. There is a discount code for you guys, which is on cars. There's no Lucy, you do not need me past this point. You're on your own, just use code on cars or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now or click the link below and you get 60% off your first box and then 20% off all of your boxes for the next two months. That's free dessert for life. So highly recommend HelloFresh. The meals start from just £3.15 per portion. Super reasonably priced and really, really delicious and fun meals to cook at home. So thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and let's hop back in the poor series. There's no one behind me so this is literally perfect, okay? Let's knock it down a bit. Okay, we're in third. Just, it puts an instant smile on your face. I, oh, it's such a good feeling. Driving with paddles is underrated. I feel like when I've had cars in the past with paddles, I haven't used them enough. It's a lot of fun. Should we do that again? Okay, we're gonna go to second. Fun. It's so good. I, I don't really have any words to describe it. It's just the noise, the feeling of being thrown back in your chair a little bit. Not too much. There's not so much power that it's scary. Some cars you get into and you think, hmm, I need to be careful here. But um, this is just beautiful. It does naturally go back into drive um, after a while, but if you just knock over the gear stick from manual back into drive, it does it for you as well. So you can uh, go back into the cruising mode that we're going to go into for this roundabout pretty much redlined it then sorry dad he's gonna watch this video and go oh didn't tell me you were gonna use it like that but here we are so it's just effortless the gear changes are just so smooth you don't even notice it oh, this makes me think automatics are great I know I'm always talking about how much I like manuals but a car like this we've got the option for paddles and you can have the fun with it you can really drive it um, like I like to but it is also so good just to floor it in an automatic the gear changes just ride up nice and smoothly and you're just sat there with a smile on your face you've also got kick down so if you put your foot to the floor sort of past that little lip with the accelerator it sort of really goes it, it's almost like it takes a breath and then just goes for it I guess that's a little bit of the turbo lag as well it, like, yeah there you go so it's like a go it's like a little breather it takes and then suddenly we're going for it it stays it, it, it holds a higher rev range for quite a nice long time as well it's not too shy it doesn't try and drop off um, too early like some other cars you can tell this is a car for someone who enjoys driving and enjoys driving at maybe higher speeds and um, it's got a top speed of 155 which is obviously limited I'm just going to enjoy these corners now because we've got some nice corners coming up There's a fair bit of road noise, I have to say. Um, I think we've got the, it's an M Sport, and we've got the run flat tyres, so combining those two uh, kind of means you get a fair amount of road noise. It doesn't annoy me, it doesn't take away from the driving, but it's definitely something to think about if you've got a car at the moment uh, that hasn't got much road noise, it might come as a bit of a surprise, but for me it doesn't bother me at all. I've normally got music on anyway, but um, this is beautiful, look at this handling. To stick into the road. I did a squeak then. <laughs> Don't usually squeak, but there we are. No brakes needed round there, just, just hold on <laughs> and hope for the best. Honestly, the weather in England recently has not been 
hitting it. It's not been good. It's not been pleasant. So the fact that we've got a tiny bit of sunshine today, I am slightly gobsmacked. It's been raining all morning, but we decided to take the car out and we've got a tiny bit of sunshine, so I'm very grateful for that. I remember when we did the Abarth video and we were just tipping it down and I was just under an umbrella like shouting at the camera because it couldn't hear me. Anyway, so the M Sport model is beautiful. Obviously you've got the SE, the Sport and the M Sport. It's more about the looks of the car, the trims, uh, like the steering wheel, the wheels, all that kind of stuff. The things that you get for an M Sport, comparing it to the price of an SE, I think it's so worth it to go for an M Sport if you've got the option. To show how premium the 4 Series is, they didn't actually make an SE. So normally in BMW you have SE Sport and M Sport. They only made a Sport and an M Sport and a luxury. So it shows that they didn't even have like the most standard option. We've gone straight up to Sport. But anyway, the M Sport for me, it ticks all the boxes and I think for the price difference between the Sport and the M Sport, it's 100% worth it to get the M Sport if you can. I don't know, maybe because I worked so closely with them, it really stands out to me when it's like a Sport or an M Sport, the comparison and the differences. You just get so much more with the M Sport. So starting at the front down here, I mean, firstly, the colour is beautiful. It's Estoril Blue. I actually had a two series in Estoril Blue for a little while and it's a great colour on BMW because it matches the badge perfectly. It really blends in nicely and I think it's a really great looking colour. It's nice and metallic, so when the sun hits it, it's really beautiful. And I think this, the, the F models in BMWs are just great and once we go into the G's they're getting a little bit more like space age and it's just getting kind of worse. When you go back I do love some of the older models as well but I feel like this just is a really lovely era of BMW. We've got nice big grills at the front, he's added some like aftermarket M coloured grill pieces here, you love them or hate them. Really beautiful lights going around the side, great curvature there and of course the bonnet. It's a super aggressive looking bonnet as well with the four lines going up. A really nice front bumper as well down here so there's loads of nice shapes, a very nice looking car in my opinion. We've got the 19 inch alloys here and the lacquer here has started to come off a little bit so that looks a little bit rubbish but when they're looking good they're looking really good they're the diamond cuts as well so you've got like the two-tone metal blue brake calipers and then another little detail with the M badge here pretty thin low profile tires obviously makes the road noise a little bit worse and the ride a little bit harder so I mentioned before it's a convertible we're gonna get the roof down in a second but it's a hard top convertible which I'm torn which I'd prefer I think the safety aspect is in like no one's gonna come and cut a hole in your roof with a hard top well they could try it they're gonna find it very difficult there's less chance of there being leaks and stuff and problems with a harder roof I think versus a softer roof I think if you're like a die-hard convertible fan you're probably gonna want the soft top but for me personally I think hard tops really cool because you get the benefits of it being not a convertible and a convertible in one it could look and feel like a coupe like it helps with the noise inside the car it's not too noisy you've not got like too much wind noise and that's why this is a great daily driver all year round really because in the summer you've got the convertible in the winter you've got like a sturdy hard top that you you don't need to worry about getting damaged in any sort of weather. I think it ticks a lot of boxes. Anyway, so coming around the side, obviously you've got some parts that show that it's a convertible, but I think it's done really well. It's, it's quite discreet and the way that it folds back is really cool as well. So we'll show you that in a second. Just quickly spin around to the boot just here. We've got the nice 435i badge, twin exhaust down the bottom. So open up the boot, it's a fairly heavy boot. This little flap down here, it's not really a flap, is it? That's ginormous, what would you call it? Cover lifts up quite easily. So you've got a fairly big boot space here but then if you want to have the roof down, you just pull this down and make sure that all your things are underneath here. They're not here, they're not here, they're not here. So obviously you lose quite a lot of boot space because the roof goes into the boot. Still pretty good. You're gonna get like a week's worth of shopping in there easily. Now I have been known in reviews to sit in a boot to uh, show you the size against me for, for real life scale. So I suppose it always makes me look like I'm being taken away or something. It's not a good look, is it, getting into a boot and you're filming me. It's really not good. There's a horse coming up the road as well. I'm not sure why that matters or helps. Yeah. Oh, should I wait for them to go past? No, just get in. Should I go for it? Okay. Don't mind me, everyone. I'm, I'm fine. I'm getting in here through my own choice. Oh, it's actually really tight. I can't get my head under there. <laughs> wait. Oh, technically, I could be in this boot with the roof down. That's a big boot. I'm not trying it. That gives me a massive amount of uh, heart palpitations, the idea of a, boot, a roof collapsing on top of me. But anyway, you're welcome everyone for that again. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up the video because I get into boots for you all. Thank you. No power closed boot, which I think I'd miss a little bit. I do quite like the one button. It's completely pointless really. It's very easy to close a boot, but you get used to your things. And we've got a rear view camera as well, which is always good. There's a bit of a power close in that it kind of accepts it. It kind of takes it off your hand. You have to do the first bit of hard work on your own and then it takes it over for the final end piece. The sun's gone now, so let's get the roof down.
Okay, now we're going to get the roof down. I'm going to show you how easy it is. With one finger, we've got a little button down here. Pull it back. Keep it held down. You do have to hold it as well. Lots of hard work in this car, isn't there? I'm going to leave this all in real time so you can see how fast it is. But I think it's quite cool to look at as well, like seeing it all collapse into itself. And then come back quick. There you go. Did you get that noise, do you think? Oh, and then actually the, the windows do all go up as well. Bit of an ick. Something I love about this type of car is that it's just one smooth, like, streamlined thing. Like, you can see all the way back now, all open. I, I love convertibles in a way, but maybe if I had really short hair, I'd think differently. But they're very irritating when you've got long hair. I'm always eating my hair and it does annoy me a bit. But there is nothing better than being in a convertible. Like, in the summer, in the sun, music playing. Convertibles are really fun. And it's nice having a car that can be less of a convertible and a full-on convertible. You've got both. But anyway, um, interior-wise in this car, we've got some beautiful black leather seats. They've got the blue stitching as well, being, being the M Sport. We've got the blue stitching just here. And then the little M detailing here with the uh, two blues and the red. And we've also got the blue trim along here um, with the aluminium hexagon sort of style trim. I can't remember the technical word for that. I did remember it when I was working there. If you went for the Sport, you'd get the red. Um, so like it shows a different trim. And again, with the steering wheel, it's the M Sport steering wheel. So you've got the little badge down here. Really lovely steering wheel, perfect size. Um, really comfortable to hold not too much going on so you've just got your limiter your cruise control your volume and your different modes here for like phone calls etc um, so yeah really simple but it, it does everything it needs to do something I love here which may seem just like a small thing is you just twist these to change the temperature now in our G model BMW you have to press an up down arrow so if you're driving and you're like trying to fiddle around for it you're obviously trying not to look down so you're trying to see and you've got to press it about 15 times to get it from hot to cold here it's just a twist and I think They've overcomplicated it slightly. This is how it should be, and I'm very happy to see it. We've also got the um, heated steering wheel button around the side, which is perfect for a convertible. So if it is winter, you've got your hat and your gloves on, heated steering wheel, heated seats. You're really living the dream. You've got the air collar behind just here, which you've got the little buttons for down next to the convertible. Yeah, my ear is warming. Lovely. Three yeah. different modes as well, so you can see how much air you want in your ears. And your passenger is also free to the feature. Good. Someone's using some heavy machinery. Does he not know we're filming a Lucy on cars here? We've, we've hired out the whole field for the afternoon. You've obviously got like the eye drive system as well, which I'm not going to bore you with. Sat nav, DAB radio, etc. Bluetooth, all the things you look for in a car this age. Um, and then you've got like the memory function, the one to eight along here where you can um, input things like radio, sports displays. You can have the sat nav set to take you home. So I, I remember in my car, I had number eight as my home address. So wherever I was, I'd press eight and it would navigate me home. So there's things you can do to personalize these cars to make it, make it your own, as they say. These interiors just work. They're, they're not too flashy, but they're just flashy enough. There's not too many buttons. You've got the, just the right amount. It's really classy, sporty enough. I think it ticks a lot of boxes. Let me also get in the back because is I can't do a full review without showing you. This is obviously a four-seater convertible. To show you what room we've got in the back, so you've obviously got the usual little lift here, but then to give you a little bit more room, they give you a button so you can kind of slowly move it forwards. Uh, it's moving back on its own, nice So, I mean, it's not bad. It is funny being in the back of a convertible. It feels a bit odd, like, like you've got no protection whatsoever. It's moving on its own now, I don't know why. It's not bad at all. I mean, the person here where George was sat is gonna have an awful lot less room. George is six foot two and a half. I'm five foot eight and a half. So you can see like the two different people here. So if you're very tall and you've got people that need to go in the back, maybe consider that a little bit and consider their knees. You've also got cup holders back here, which is very nice. So they've actually thought about the back passengers instead of it just being like an afterthought. If you think about the two series convertible and that's only in the soft top of this age, that definitely has a lot less room in the back. So if you need more space and you're considering two or four, then four is 100% the option to go for. But yeah, lots of space. And then if I now show you the boot with the roof down, you will see there is a very interesting button here, a little up and down arrow. If I hold the up one, it lifts it up so that if you need to, I mean, when are you gonna actually use that? I guess if you've got something really big in the boot and you need to like pull it out here, it is a handy little extra that they thought of for that circumstance where you might need to access the boot with the roof down. And just the engineering itself of the folding roof and this feature is incredible. Like, I don't know how the person that designed that figured out how it's all gonna work. It blows my mind anyway. I really haven't heard much about these roofs going wrong. Again, when I worked there, it wasn't like a common fault. I remember coming up lots. 
So this is a eight speed automatic gearbox, super smooth, as I mentioned earlier. And it's got a nice little bubble, a little, can you hear yeah. it? Then if it's picking it up on camera, it's sort of going blub, 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 blub. Less weird, but it sounds like I'm underwater. It doesn't sound like I'm underwater. The exhaust is popping a little bit, um, which is always good. In terms of engine options, we've got quite a few to choose from. So like I said, this is a 435, God, potholes in England, what is going on? The 435i, you've also got the 420d, which is a two litre diesel. You then got the 430, which is also a two litre. It can be a bit confusing and weird because often you'll think the 30 would be a three litre, but it's not. Um, I'm gonna put them all on screen. So if you're really considering one of these, you can have a nice long look. Um, and figure out what you want to go for but I mean from experience 435i is beautiful George had a 435d which was great as well the diesel version had a little bit more torque I mean there's pros and cons of petrol and diesel and with the 435d it was also the x drive so four wheel drive which is really nice and then this is the rear wheel drive I mean it's personal preference what you go for the grip on the x drive was incredible but I have to say I've got no complaints in this I haven't noticed it to be having bad grip like it's it's amazing it sticks to the road so well around corners and then obviously you also have the 440i which is another level up from this one so again it's personal preference if you're thinking of getting one take some for drive see what you prefer see where budgets sit and lie and i mean if you can afford the 440i maybe that's a good one to go for i've driven one myself they're a lot of fun but also i feel like you get most of what you get with that in the 435i as well really personally the two liters feel a little bit underpowered especially being the convertible because it's a lot heavier but if you're just wanting a car that's a great car to drive and it's still fun it's maybe not the quickest car but you've got the convertible there may be like a 420d 420i is a good one to go for i guess you don't need like a crazy engine in it to enjoy the convertible but for me personally i wouldn't particularly want the two liter having driven it it does feel a little bit underpowered but who's this car for this car is for potentially i'm thinking like a family that maybe have slightly older kids that don't need these big ginormous car seats like for us we couldn't have this car because our two-year-old's car seat is bigger than the car seats in the cars like it's insane it, it's the biggest contraption it's ridiculous it's way bigger than you think they're gonna be then you put it in the car and you think oh dear we need a bigger car i thought we already bought a big car but it's not big enough so i can't recommend these for families with young children but if you've got older kids they could sit in the back mum and dad in the front or whatever it's great for couples it's great for single people where i'm struggling is i don't quite see what more you can get if you get a brand new 4 Series. And I know there's gonna be like some like technological revelations in the car that justify the new price tag, but realistically, if, you, if you're someone that enjoys driving good cars, you can get like an amazing car here for so much less than it was worth when it came out. I just think it's an absolute steal because really, like what do you get more in the newer cars that this doesn't have? I don't really know. If you're watching this and you drive a brand new 4 Series, please leave me a comment and, and convince me otherwise, tell me what you get because I genuinely don't know because for me, it feels like you're getting everything you need and want for a fraction of the price just from choosing to drive a slightly older car. You get a great finance deal on one of these potentially. I think it's a good car for someone that, that wants to get into a really great car but doesn't really want to pay full price for a brand new one. And I, I couldn't agree more. Like I wouldn't buy a brand new car it doesn't make sense these days. You, it just it depreciates as soon as you drive it out of the showroom, unless you're doing some sort of like PCP lease agreement or something on it. If you're buying it or you're doing it on like higher purchase uh, sort of finance agreement, it, it doesn't make any sense to get a brand new car when you can pick up something like this, which is so much fun for like a tiny fraction of the brand new price. And obviously BMW's all-wheel drivers car through and through is kind of a safe option. It's a car that you know you're gonna enjoy and you're gonna get on with. I can't believe the sun's come out for this video. Big shout out to you, son. So my dad's racked up a 30.8 average MPG. I mean, I don't think they do, they do some really long drives in it, so maybe that's helped it go up a little bit. I think that's pretty impressive for a three litre petrol engine, personally, with a whopping 306 brake horsepower. Um, I think that's an amazing MPG. It puts the Range Rover to shame. <laughs> so it's not bad, fuel economy wise. I mean, you're not gonna buy a three litre and think you're the most economical person in the world, because that's not how it works. But yeah, pretty impressive. Overall, I really enjoy this car. I think it's got a lot of positives. I don't think I've actually mentioned any negatives. I, I can't really think of any, to be honest with you. I'm not just saying that because my dad paid me to film this video. I'm joking, he didn't, he didn't pay me. The only negative that I could think of is that it's not an M4, but to be honest, I've driven an M4. Well, I've driven lots of M4s and they're kind of a, a bit of an animal, a bit of a beast that you have to think a little bit more when you're driving. This is just easy cruiser. You don't even like, I don't know, I feel like I'm not even driving this. I could, I don't actually remember driving here just now. This last 10 minute drive I've done, I don't remember it. I don't remember where we've been or what I've seen. 
because it's one of those where you're kind of in autopilot um, because it's just that easy to drive and smooth and seamless but it can also turn into being a lot of fun that's it actually that that describes this car so well it, it, it kind of ticks all the boxes and yeah i really enjoyed driving it today so if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new as always if you've got a cool car you want me to come and review then please drop me an email it'll be on the screen now don't forget to follow me on instagram and leave some comments below on your opinion on this car if you've got one if you want one if you've had one previously if you love it if you hate it if you love me if you hate me comment it below um, and I'll see you very soon in the next Lucy on Cars. Goodbye.